Once again, our sermon text today is Jeremiah chapter 11. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew, and then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. And his name he remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So I saw a video online, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I, I, I watched it, but uh, it's, it's old, it's been on there for about two years now, and it's from one of those talent shows, I think Switzerland got talent, Switzerland's got talent, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an older video, they don't speak English, so I'm not quite sure what the judges are saying to one another, but the general gist of the video is clear. So the, the contestant's an artist, and you know, usually it's a vocalist, someone like that, but she's, she's an artist. She paints, she draws, uh, she's using markers and chalk and pens and things. And she starts out by drawing one of the judges. And it's kind of a caricature, uh, more than a, a portrait or anything like that. And it, when you first look at it, you think, well, this isn't overly impressive. It's better than what I can do, but I don't know if this is show material. And the judges kind of feel the same way. And sure enough, one of the judges gets bored and uh, after about a minute and slaps the buzzer and they're her first ex, you know, and she gets four, she's out of the contest. And then that starts the chain reaction, the next buzzer comes along. And then the third buzzer, until finally the only one that's left is the judge who's being drawn. He wants to see the finished product, but it's taking a weird turn and it, it doesn't quite look like him anymore. She's done some different things to it. Um, and so he hits the buzzer too. And so she looks back, you know, a little dejected. She's been rejected. She can't progress in the show now. But she wants to finish her drawing, so she makes two lines that go up, and then she flips it over. And she pulls out a powder, and she blows the powder onto the, onto the drawing. And all of a sudden, it transforms from this caricature of the one judge to a beautiful portrait of another judge. And it's amazing that she was able to make that transformation, drawing it upside down and kind of blind because you couldn't see any of the lines that she was doing without the powder on there. And it was amazing. And the audience first first react to it. They they were they, stupendous. They all stood up and cheered. It was such a beautiful transformation. And I think it took the, the judges a couple seconds to catch on because they realized what they had done. But they had eliminated her from the contest, even though she had this amazing artwork. You know, as you can imagine, the contestant was crying, rejected. Well, the video goes on, and you can look it up if you want to see what happens from there. You know, Jeremiah is a rejected prophet. Jeremiah is often referred to as the weeping prophet, right? He has the Book of Lamentations, which are just full of his, of his rejections, his laments, his crying over Israel. That Israel has turned away from God and that they will be exiled from the land. And so Jeremiah is crying over Israel's lack of faith, their lack of transformation. Now a popular verse out of Jeremiah is verse one, one, chapter 1, verse 5. And that verse goes like this, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. Now often this verse is one that's taken out of context as well. Because although God did know you before you were born, although God did form you in eternity, and although God does have a plan for you, it's not always a good thing when God speaks to you directly, announcing that He has formed you and consecrated you for service in his kingdom. Just think of Moses, right? Moses, who a bush spoke to him in the middle of the desert, told him to go to Egypt to free the people of God. But not only was, was Moses rejected by Pharaoh and then rejected by the people, but then he had a whole army of chariots chasing after him, trying to kill him. 
And then when he did free the people, he, he, he took some of those miserable people through the desert, and all they had to do was complain about him and his leadership. It wasn't a good thing. And Jeremiah is the same. God chose Jeremiah to be a suffering prophet. A gentle lamb led to the slaughter. God chose Jeremiah to preach to a blasphemous nation who had rejected God and who will ultimately try to have him killed. And so in our text today, Jeremiah is weeping because the Israelites, God's chosen people, have rejected his call for transformation. He is, they have rejected his call for repentance. And now, God in chapter 11 is warning Jeremiah that the people are planning to have him killed. And that's why he says, here I am, a gentle lamb, a gentle lamb bringing the word of God, being led to the slaughter. You see, Jeremiah came as a prophet in a time when God's people were worshiping false Baals and other false gods. And their worship practices in general often invited them into deeper and deeper sin. You see, the, the false worship of false Baals uh, often started with coveting, right? You saw your neighbors around you, the Philistines and, and others around you that were worshiping these Baals, and you saw what they had in their lives. And so you coveted that, and you said, well, let's start worshiping their false gods. And then from there, the worship practice regularly involved uh, adultery and prostitution. And then apparently, uh, some of these practices also involved sacrificing children and other people. So these, the Israelites all of a sudden have no problem committing murder, even murdering a prophet of God. And so Jeremiah is said to be God's prophet and preach transformation. That if they would transform their lives by repenting and turning to God, that God would once again transform them into His chosen people, into His chosen race. And he preached this repentance, that the true people would turn away from Baal, that they would turn away from false gods, and yet they refused to hear his message. They refused to hear what he preached. And so then when they refused, he was sent to preach death and exile. And so the people became angry and they plotted against him. And so God makes it known to Jeremiah that they're planning his death. And Jeremiah mourns, a gentle lamb being led to the slaughter. Jeremiah came peacefully to preach and to transform the lives of Israel, to bring them back into God's presence. And yet when he was rejected, he called on God for vengeance. Now, Jesus also came as a prophet to preach to Israel, just like Jeremiah. And his plans weren't all sunshine and rainbows either. He came also as a gentle lamb being led to the slaughter. Jesus came to preach the same transformation that we would repent of our sins and turn to God who would transform us then into his children. He came to preach to Israel knowing that they would reject him and that they would ultimately crucify him. He came as a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And much like Jeremiah, the more Jesus preached for transformation through repentance, the more the people rejected. Because just like Jeremiah, transformation means change. Jesus was challenging their power, their hierarchy, their way of life. And they didn't like that. They didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. And so they plotted to have him killed. They laughed at him. They accused him of blasphemy. They whipped him. They beat him. And then they killed him. A gentle lamb led to the slaughter. But the difference is this. Jeremiah preached transformation and then he was rejected. But Jesus preached transformation 
And he accomplished the transformation for us through their rejection. For when Jesus was crucified out of jealousy and anger, he bore our sins and transformed us from sinners into saints. When Jesus was buried out of spite and fear, he conquered those fears, he conquered death, and he rose again to transform us from mortal to immortal. And Jesus, the gentle lamb led to the slaughter, transformed us into a beautiful child of God. God's own child. And our transformation starts with repentance. And what that means is that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. An explanation to the first commandment. Right? Our transformation starts with fear, love, and trust in God above all things. But to live that way doesn't always work out, does it? Because we often have fears that are far greater than our fear of God. And think about that for a moment. If you fear something more than you fear God, that typically means that you think that that thing has more power than God has, right? And we know that's not true. So if you elevate that thing in fear, whether it's the fear of sin, death, or whatever, you've elevated that to a greater position than God, and that, that's breaking that first commandment. That's not fearing God and trusting in Him to be able to get you through it. So I, I had a rough week. Um... Uh, you know, aside from all of the normal life things that I go through each week, the normal challenges of, of navigating a family and, and church and all of that, uh, we had some extra things. And I made a couple doctor's appointments thrown into the mix, uh, one for Poppy, one for me, and then a, a couple other things at the end of the week that I wasn't expecting, just some things that I heard and, and, and had to deal with. And so I had a rough week, and if you, if you saw me on Monday or Tuesday, you knew I was already stressed. I was pretty quiet, uh, I was a little frustrated, and it all stemmed from the fact that I had to uh, have a procedure done, a minor procedure. I had to have two ingrown toenails removed. I had never had this done before. I figured it would hurt because I've, I've clipped my toenails and my fingernails a little too short sometimes. I know how much that can sting for a couple days. And so, I, and I don't know what the doctor's going to do to fix the problem, and so I'm just stressing over it. And I'm letting it build and build and build. And so, to the point where on Wednesday morning I get to the doctor and I sit down in the waiting room, and of course I'm waiting for an hour letting it build. And then I get into the chair, and I sit down, and he's like, he looks at us and says, yep, we've got to cut into him. I'm like, okay, this isn't good, but okay, we'll, we'll do it. And he's like, well, do you want to do them both now, or one now, one later? And I'm like, let's just get it over with. I can't do them both. And, uh, and I was letting it build, and I could feel my blood pressure rise. So that by the time the nurse came in to give me the anesthesia in the toes, um, I was just drenched in sweat and, and feeling dizzy, and I was going to pass out. As I told her, she had to stop and lie me down and turn the chair into a bed so I could lie down, which after that was fine. And, and I had to laugh at myself a little bit because as soon as she had me lie down, she goes, I'll get you a cup of water. And since you're doing such a great job, I'll bring you a lollipop too. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is even funnier because just the day before, I took Poppy in to get uh, five vaccines. And she handled it far better than I did. <laughs> and she deserved her lollipop much more than me. So after that, I was fine, but you know, I was still, still worried that this is going to hurt. And, and, and thank God, uh, praise be to God, that it really hasn't bothered me at all since then. Like, I, I don't feel it now. I haven't felt it in the last couple of days, and uh, things are moving in the right direction. But then, building with that stress, um, Thursday and Friday, I had some things that uh, made me uncomfortable, and then uh, received a letter from a member who, who was looking to transfer a little bit closer to home. And that was just kind of a bummer. And so it really weighed on me, right? And so and, and when I'm feeling down like that, I always go to listen to a sermon. And I go online and, and I look for them. I found one from last week's text, uh, and, and it was great. It was about how, um, it was from the point of the view of the scribes and the Pharisees uh, in the story from last week where Jesus healed the, the boy with the demon, but the disciples couldn't do it. Right? 
And so from the point of view of the, the Pharisees, they're, they're, they're having a great time because uh, they're seeing that you know, God's people can't do anything without, without God. But what do God's people do when they fail? What did the disciples do when they couldn't do it? Well, they went to Jesus. And they laid their burdens at Jesus' feet. So the point of the sermon was that God is greater than that. And it really reminded me that, that God is greater than our fears. And so you have, you have Jeremiah in the same context as he preached to Israel. He bore the burden of being a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And yet instead of running and giving up, he gave the burden to God who took this man who was broken by the weight of the sin of the world and he made this man whole. And in doing that, Jeremiah says, God, I have committed to your cause. And he keeps preaching. You see, God has taken each and every one of us in baptism and has transformed us into the children of God, worthy of salvation. And God now stands by our side. When you feel broken and in despair, you turn to God. God, who first sent Jesus to be a lamb, a gentle lamb, led to the slaughter. To take away the sins of the world. And it is this Jesus in whom you've been baptized. And it is in this Jesus who was made you a child of God. And it is Jesus who transformed you then from broken to whole. When the weight of the world is placed on your shoulders, lay, lay that weight at God's feet. Because it is God who sent Jesus, the gentle lamb, led to the slaughter who bore the weight of the world and crucified it with him. And that through that crucifixion, Jesus now gives you strength for this life. For when the burdens of sin and death paralyze you with fear, call on God to take that fear. God who sent Jesus, the gentle lamb, led to the slaughter, who in death conquered the grave to transform us as God's children from mortal to immortal, where fear, sin, and death have no power over us. God has transformed you to fear, love, and trust in Him. Amen.